Good afternoon. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson and Glasgow City Region Deal, Glasgow Airport Access Project. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there shouldn't be any interventions or interruptions. I call on Michael Matheson, Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes, please. Uh, President Officer, the Scottish Government recognises the important role transport plays in the lives of those living and working in Glasgow and the west of Scotland. Uh, we continue to support the Glasgow City Region deal and want to see it succeed. We support the Glasgow, a Glasgow Airport Access Project and are committed to working with partners to improve surface access to the airport as a matter of urgency. As members will know, the Glasgow Airport Access Project is part of the Glasgow City Region deal and as such the responsibility for delivering the City Deal's projects rest with the relevant local authorities, in this case, Glasgow City and Renfrewshire Councils. Members may also be aware that the original outline business case for the Glasgow Airport Access Project was approved by the Glasgow City Region Deal Cabinet in 2016. Officials at Transport Scotland and Network Rail had consistently raised concerns about aspects of the business case and as a result, the then Minister for Transport and the Islands commissioned an independent audit. This approach was welcomed by the councils who supported the audit process and agreed that the project team would work to address the key audit concerns around the transport demands, rail operational issues and the economic case, including costs and benefits. These discussions led to agreement that Transport Scotland would commission parallel work to better understand existing and future rail demands and timetable capacity constraints around the South Glasgow Rail Network. Over the last 12 months, the Airport Access Project team have worked to address the concerns. On the 30th of January, I chaired the Glasgow Airport Access Executive Steering Group. This includes the leaders of both councils and representatives from Glasgow Airport. The group was established in, in recognition of the importance of this project and to give strategic direction. At the meeting, we heard how the project team have considered issues raised in the independent audit, including the potential impact of a tram train option on the existing rail network. Members should be aware that Glasgow Central is Scotland's busy station. It serves around 33 million passengers a year and is operating at or near capacity. Growth predictions indicate that the station demand will be 60 million passengers a year by 2040. The Scottish Government and the wider rail industry is acutely aware that performance levels at Glasgow Central and across the west of Scotland rail network are at significant risk if these existing and future demands are not strictly managed. In line with government rail policy, supported by the wider rail industry, we are firstly seeking to manage and address capacity by increasing rolling stock provision. Where additional services must be added to the existing network, they should be focused on those routes where heavy rail services are best placed to deliver rather than introducing new services which might be more efficiently delivered by other modes. In taking forward this approach, Transport Scotland has been assessing service enhancements which would make best use of the current and planned major rail projects and tackling routes where passenger volume demands more seats. The improvements focus on providing longer and more frequent trains on the shots, East Kilbride, Ayrshire, Inverclyde, Lanark and Paisley Canal routes, as well as additional cross-border services. The tram train service uh, between Glasgow Airport and Glasgow Central Station was also considered as part of the work. The analysis has shown that to accommodate tram train services at the airport, performance on the wider rail network would be negatively impacted and require either the reduction of current rail services to, from Ayrshire and Inverclyde, or the deferral of future 
service enhancements and or significant and high cost infrastructure and uh, at and around Glasgow Central. The capacity analysis undertaken by Transport Scotland has indicated that it would only be possible to accommodate six out of a planned 25 airport services during morning peak period. Therefore, in the assessment, there would be 19 airport services which we would come into direct conflict with other train services and therefore could not be accommodated without detrimental impact. Just as an example of the potential implications, the, train in, the trains in direct conflict with the tram include some arrivals into Glasgow between 0800 and 0900 from Ayrshire and Inverclyde, which carry high volumes of commuters. Furthermore, it's been estimated that 15 passenger services using Glasgow Central Station and its approaches would have to be removed to accommodate four tram trains per hour. This is estimated to be in the region of 5,000 seats in the AM peak period on heavily laden services. In addition to these significant impacts, safety considerations would be required to operate lighter tram train units on the heavy rail network. These have not been fully considered in the current business case. The leaders of the local authorities responsible for the project have recognised that current and future rail services should not be compromised and that the case for tram train set out in the original outline business case was not robust in this regard. Senior officer, we cannot ignore the fact that tram train option would have a detrimental impact on the network and has many real and potentially insurmountable challenges. I'm sure that members would agree that taxpayers' money should be spent on projects with a robust business case for inclusive growth and on a project which is not detrimental to current rail passengers. The executive steering group heard that the emerging preferred option for a personalised rapid transit link could be delivered within the existing city region deal budget and their timescale being operational by 2025. Importantly, this approach has received backing from the leaders of Glasgow City and Renfrewshire councils who have rightly expressed that their responsibility is to deliver a workable and affordable solution which will not impact on rail services. Partners will shortly ask the City Deal Cabinet to approve work on the PRT option to be completed this year. In addition to supporting the City Deal, the Scottish Government is taking forward work to determine what transport investment should be made in the future to deliver our economic strategy. The second Strategic Transport Projects Review is the opportunity to consider at a national and a regional level the important contribution that transport infrastructure projects will play in delivering and sustaining the economic growth we aspire for. I recognise that the performance of the M8 between Glasgow and the airport is of concern and consideration of the future needs of the strategic road network and public transport network which supports the economy of the Glasgow Corner Basin will be an important part of that work. So, and also, our cities and regions are the engines of our economy and the Scottish Government is committed to working with partners to unlock investment, stimulate growth and to deliver infrastructure. The Scottish Government will continue to support the city region deal and we want to see it succeed. Improving connectivity is a priority for the region as a whole and improving surface access to Glasgow Airport should be delivered for the benefits of all and not at the detriment of other services or planned enhancements. In taking forward the Glasgow Airport Access Project, it's essential that we consider a whole system approach and I'm confident they've made, we've made significant progress towards that outcome through the ongoing work with the city region deal partners. I look forward to seeing further development on the city deal project to improve access to Glasgow Airport and to the second STPR. 
which will set the long-term strategic outcome for the region and for the nation as a whole. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will have to move on to the next item of business. I can ask those members who wish to ask questions to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Jamie Green to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr. Thank you. Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement today? Uh, Glasgow Airport is the only uh, major international airport that is only accessible by road. Yeah. The airport is growing, the population around it is growing, and the employment hub in which it sits is growing as well. It is simply inconceivable that the only way you can access this road is through a heavily congested M8. There has got to be some other form of connection. Yeah. Now, I accept, and the Cabinet Secretary mentioned this in great detail, that someone who represents parts of Ayrshire and Reclyde, that any rail link to come uh, to improve connectivity should not and never should be at the detriment of any rail services in any way. And I fully support the Cabinet Secretary on that. However, the PRT proposal only connects the airport to Paisley and surely flies in the face of the spirit of the intention of the city deal to connect Glasgow Airport and Glasgow City Centre itself. Now, I accept there are issues with the tram train proposal, but can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, is he truly confident that Transport Scotland and other uh, stakeholders have fully explored each and every potential option available to connect Glasgow Airport and Glasgow City Centre. And that could be the city centre, it doesn't need to be Central Station specifically. Can I ask what the potential cost also of the PRT solution would be versus what the original tram train solution was estimated to be? Will Paisley's infrastructure be ready to accommodate this connection? And with regards to the tram train solution, which seems to have been shelved today, is he fully confident with the SNP Council administrations that have made this decision today that they have been robust, done adequate due diligence, and does he think they've made the right decision? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Senator Officer, can I address this issue, that, um, uh, which is simply not true, the idea that Glasgow is the only airport in Europe that doesn't have a, a rail link? Uh, for example, uh, Luton doesn't have uh, one. What they're doing just now, they're putting a PRT in place in order to connect it. Uh, Luton, uh, Luton actually carries, carries No, no, I want, look, uh, sorry, Luton folks. Uh, uh, cabinet, Secretary, cabinet Secretary, sit down a moment, please. I want to hear the answers, so does everybody else. And I can't if you're shouting over each other. Please, Cabinet uh, Secretary. Uh, Member says you compare it to Luton. Luton carries 16 million passengers a year, significantly more than Glasgow Airport does at the present time. Budapest as well doesn't have a rail link either. Many of them are looking at putting in infrastructure to help to support and improve connectivity. But this idea that it's the only airport in Europe that doesn't have a rail link is factually untrue. Let me deal with the, let me deal with the issue about improving connectivity to the airport, in particular surface connectivity to the airport. There is absolutely no doubt about the need to make sure that we improve surface access to the airport. And that's exactly what was proposed within the city deal. The city deal proposal is one which has been taken forward by the two councils, Renfrewshire and Glasgow City Council. The proposals which they are considering are proposals that they have developed, not this government. And when they considered the issue back in 2016, they very quickly ruled out a PRT option and did not develop an outline business case for that to be considered. That was a decision that was made by the cabinet at that particular point, not by the Scottish government. In my view, they should have conducted much more work at an early stage in order to analyse the potential impact that could have. But of course, the deal is also about the wider region and how that it can help to improve growth and help to improve connectivity in that wider region. And as I have set out, the proposed tram train option would have had a significant detrimental impact on the rest of the region and the potential to improve services in these areas as well, which is why it's important that the City Deal partners consider these issues and look for an option that allows them to improve surface access to the airport, but is not detrimental to the rest of the region. And that's exactly what they, that's why they have chosen to pursue the PRT option and intend to take that forward uh, to develop a full business case on the matter. And the member made the, uh, asked the questions about whether uh, the cost for this. Uh, the cost for this are allocated uh, within the city deal budget. 
Uh, the amount which was intended for the tram train option is around £138 million. The PRT option is likely to be in that similar frame. However, there were significant cost elements within the tram train option that were not considered within the business case for the very reasons that I've outlined uh, and the significant enhancements that would also be necessary to infrastructure to cope with that. But that again would be a matter for the city deal partners to decide on whether they wish to allocate any additional monies within the city deal arrangement towards any surface access arrangement. But alongside that, we need to also address the road connectivity to the west of Glasgow, and particularly to uh, the airport in itself. And that's something that can be considered within the STPR too, and is an area which will be given clear priority in order to look at what other options can be developed in order to improve connectivity to the airport by road. Colin Smith, followed by James Dornan. Thank you, President Officer, and can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. This is the second time the SNP have axed plans for a rail link to Glasgow Airport, and yet another betrayal of the people of Glasgow and the West of Scotland. It's a betrayal roundly condemned by the business community right across the West of Scotland. The city of Glasgow continues to grow. Glasgow Airport continues to grow, but sadly so too does the utter lack of ambition of this SNP government and the SNP leadership in Glasgow and Renfrewshire councils. Now, it's clear the so-called emerging preferred pod is a second-rate option for an increasingly second-rate transport system under this government. Presiding officer, this rail link, which has undergone review after review, was at the heart of the Glasgow City Region deal signed by this government five years ago, but only now are they raising capacity issues. There's conflicting expert opinion challenging those capacity claims, but if they are an obstacle to the light rail plan, does the Cabinet Secretary not accept this exposes the complete failure of this government to adequately improve capacity at Glasgow Central? When will the government show some ambition and put in place a proper plan to grow capacity across Glasgow instead of the current policy of simply blocking badly needed new services with all the economic damage that does to Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, the uh, member may not be aware, but concerns were raised by Transport Scotland and by Network Rail back in 2016 when the City Deal Partners brought forward, brought forward their issues around this matter and they welcomed the independent audit that was undertaken uh, and recognised that that set out a number of uh, challenges within that. Uh, but the member uh, seems to want to ignore uh, the point I was making in my statement, and that is that Network Rail and Transport Scotland are looking at introducing a range of enhancements in order to improve capacity at Glasgow Central uh, with the additional rolling stock and also frequency of services. What the member doesn't seem to recognise is that you cannot introduce a single project in ignoring the rest of the network and think everyone else should actually have less of a service in order to give priority to one particular service. And that's essentially what the member is arguing. Given the area which the member represents and the impact this would have on areas such as Inverclyde and Ayrshire and also for services into Lanarkshire as well, we cannot ignore the potential impact that this proposal would actually have. I'm disappointed that the original outline business case did not address these various issues. And that's why the enhancement programme to improve these services is all part of the work that's been taken forward by Transport Scotland and Network Rail in order to address the capacity issues that we have going forward. And that's why it has to be undertaken in a managed way and in a way that does not create detriment to those other passengers who have to make use of the services coming into Glasgow Central. In a way that the member just seems to want to say, who cares? Just got on with this one because we don't care about Ayrshire. We don't care about those in Inverclyde who will be affected by it. Let's just ignore those passengers from those areas, even in his own region, because he is committed to this for party political purposes rather than about improving services for the travelling public within the Glasgow region area. Right. Now, I have 12 members wanting to ask questions. You'll have to be quick with your questions. They have to be short, please, and answers, I hope, that can match. I call James Dornan to be followed by Adam Tompkins. Thank you, President Officer. Given the problems mentioned in the opening statement, not least those that may... Uh, hinder people from coming into Glasgow to work in Glasgow if the tram train option did go, uh, did go ahead. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that Labour councillors could learn a bit from the SNP's commitment to not waste taxpayers' money on major projects which are not properly costed? And you'd have thought they would have learned from the disastrous consequences of some of their own councillors' recent decisions, not least in this city we speak in Cabinet today. Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, it's important to make sure there's a very robust 
a business case for any major infrastructure project of this nature. And the audit demonstrated that there were some very significant issues around the original business case that need to be addressed, as has the, uh, as has the timetabling study for the south of Glasgow also uh, demonstrated. Uh, these are issues that need to be addressed. And as the uh, executive group who considered this matter last week uh, recognised that there are a number of them which are extremely challenging, which the airport, the planned tram uh, train link to Glasgow Airport would actually impact adversely on the network overall. These are matters that should have been considered at a much earlier stage by the city deal partners, and I'm disappointed they never gave due consideration to those matters at the time, but it's right that those who are offering leadership to this issue within Glasgow and Renfrewshire councils recognise these potential risks and that these are matters that have to be addressed. Adam Tompkins, followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Anyone who cares about the economic growth of Glasgow would see immediately that Glasgow needs a direct rail link to its airport. Yet the SNP are cancelling such a plan for the second time in a decade. This is nothing less than a betrayal of Glasgow, Presiding Officer. And does it not show that this is a government that could not care less about Glasgow's economic future prosperity? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, when it comes to betrayal, I'll take no lessons from the Labour Party and impact they've had in places like Glasgow and the Glasgow Conurbation over, over the years, the Tories over the years. Uh, I'll take no lessons from them on the betrayal they've had to people in the west of Scotland over many, many decades. What I can say to the member is that, what I can say to the member is that he seems to think as well. I don't know, uh, sitting next to his colleague and Jamie Green, uh, to maybe, I don't know, John Scott and Ayrshire, that we should just, who cares about the folk in Ayrshire? Who cares about the folk in Inverclyde? The fact that they have a detrimental impact on their service. How can we improve connectivity to our airport? By pursuing a route that will help to deliver that and improve connectivity. And that's what the PRT option is one that they're looking at in order to develop that yet further. But what we will do is we will take this forward in a measured fashion. And when it comes to betrayal, the Tories know much more about betraying the people of Scotland, in particular the people of Glasgow, than anybody else in this chamber. And Adam should know about that. Uh, full names, please, uh, Cabinet Secretary. Full names. Stuart McMillan, followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you very much, Playing Officer. Playing Officer, the Cabinet Secretary in his statement actually touched upon the, uh, the example of Inverclyde losing a service between 8 and 9 in the morning. But also, what, uh, what would the, the transport disruption be in Inverclyde uh, further uh, throughout the daytime if this Glasgow Airport Access Project, as supported by the Labour Party and the Conservatives, uh, actually d does proceed. Bearing in, mind, bearing in mind the proposed local development plan uh, by the Labour-led Council is to suggest over 5,000 new homes in the Inverclyde area. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, as I set out in my statement, the morning peak period uh, it's estimated that around 15 uh, passenger services using Glasgow Central Station and its approaches would have to be removed, relocated, altered to accommodate four rail paths per hour for an airport service. Uh, this is in the region of some 5,000 seats removed or significantly affected in order to facilitate this. Uh, whilst these uh, may not all relate to Inverclyde and the member's constituency itself, there is absolutely no doubt that it would have a clear impact on the Inverclyde area and what is already a very busy rail uh, part of the rail network. That's why it's also uh, worth noting that the headway that you require to have between heavy and light services, such as between a, a tram and also heavy rail, it requires additional times uh, between those journey times, which would then have a significant impact on the Paisley Gilmer Street uh, to central, uh, Glasgow Central service as well. So there's no doubt there are significant challenges being able to deliver a rail link uh, directly into Glasgow uh, Central from the airport, which is why uh, the city region deal partners are sensibly looking at an alternative option which will improve connectivity while it won't deliver detriment to those who are existing passenger users on the existing network. Neil Bibby, followed by Patrick Harvey. I'm, I'm not sure the Minister fully understands what impact congestion on the M8 could have on the West Scotland economy. Yeah. Does he accept uh, that when it comes to increasing the numbers who use public transport to get to and from Glasgow Airport, that a rail link and the tram train solution has consistently been found to be the best performing option. Does he accept that? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, um, I do recognise the challenges around congestion on M8 to the west from Glasgow city centre through to the airport and the need to take forward a range of options. What the member doesn't seem to recognise is that the tram train option does not address that problem. It doesn't magic a wand and relieve all the congestion problems. It needs to be a number of different issues that are taken forward. And that's why the 
way in which it's been taken forward by the City Deal partners now is the right approach, looking at how they can deliver a system that will not offer detriment to existing rail users. And as we have said, under STPR2, we will look at what further work can be undertaken in order to improve connectivity on the road network to the west of Glasgow. And no doubt the member will be aware that the Glasgow Connectivity Commission is giving due consideration to this matter at this very time and they are looking at the wider regional implications of transport choices in the year ahead and we will give that due consideration when it's published in the weeks ahead. Patrick Harvey followed by Mike Rumbles. The Greens have always seen a case for a rail link to Glasgow Airport to take air tra airport traffic off the roads rather than just to increase the amount of it, but we've always made the case for that to be done as part of a wider regional rail network improvement. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that the proposal under the Local Rail Development Fund for Crossrail was rejected specifically because it is of national and strategic importance? Isn't it time for the Scottish Government to throw its weight behind Crossrail in alliance with a, a rail, an airport rail link? This would provide the wider regional improvements that we need, uh, rather than seeing that project languishing on the shelf. Uh, and this one now thrown into confusion. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, the issue of Crossrail was a matter which was considered in the previous STPR back in 2008 and it was rejected on the basis of the uh, cost-benefit analysis that would come from it. Also, there were issues around displacement of existing services within the, the Glasgow area, uh, which, would be, uh, which would make it uh, a detriment to some uh, uh, who use those existing uh, services. However, it's an issue which can be revisited and reconsidered. Uh, we have STPR2 uh, coming forward. There is an opportunity to look at how we can further enhance the connectivity to Glasgow and the region uh, which it serves uh, and its connecting communities. Uh, that will allow us to look at a range of different options from uh, rail through to road and other uh, forms of improving connectivity. And I've got no doubt that the uh, city councils across uh, the, uh, not just in Glasgow, but across the west of Scotland will look to use STPR2 as a way in which they can highlight the projects that they believe that could help to enhance and improve public transport within the city region area. Mike Rumbles, followed by John Mason. Does the Cabinet Secretary think now that the SNP have indeed cancelled a direct rail link for the second time, that it would be fair to charge the thousands of Glasgow airport workers the new car parking charges the SNP and Green MSPs are committed to voting through, given these workers, given these workers have no choice but to travel to work by road? I am in, 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 think this is Cabinet important. Secretary. Oh, you can always count on Mike Rumbles for a bit of creativity in matters, can't you? Uh, but no doubt there are other options about improving uh, transport links to the airport. And the PRT is a, an option which will be there, obviously, if it's the option that's pursued by the City Deal partners uh, that will improve connectivity, which can be used by workers and travellers as well, and also in looking at how we can enhance the existing road connectivity at Glasgow Airport to improve uh, frequency of public transport provision uh, to the city, uh, to the airport from the city, uh, looking at bus prioritisation, uh, 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 traffic intelligent uh, uh, management systems, all of which could actually help to enhance and improve uh, connectivity to, uh, to the uh, airport as well. And no doubt that's something which airport workers will be able to benefit from as well if it's taken forward. John Mason, followed by Annie Well. Thank you. The, the Minister spent a fair bit of time on the capacity of a Glasgow Central station in his statement. And following on Patrick Harvey's question, I would ask that at least would he instruct Transport Scotland to keep Crossrail as a possibility on the table? Because, for example, an Edinburgh Air Service could be taken out of Glasgow Central and could use a new station at Glasgow Cross, which would be a boost for that area and they would give a more direct service. Cabinet Secretary. So just as I mentioned earlier on to Patrick Harvey, issues around uh, Crossrail are matters that can be considered within the STPR2, which allow us to take a strategic overview of uh, these issues. However, Crossrail in itself would not address uh, the problems, the major problems which we have with the tram train link for the very reason uh, that the Paisley Corridor approaches at both Arkleston Junction and also at Shield Junctions uh, would still have very significant challenges in dealing with any additional capacity issues there. So the idea that Crossrail is the way in which we resolve the issue with an airport link to the Glasgow airport, to the city centre, of, uh, to Central Station in Glasgow, is not correct. There will still be very significant capacity constraints. And any introduction of a service, even with uh, Crossrail in place, even with the introduction 
uh, of a, an airport rail link uh, from the airport to the city centre uh, would still have a detrimental impact on the rest of the network uh, that service is served by Glasgow Central Station. So it's important that members recognise that Crossrail will not answer the problems and the serious challenges that are with capacity issues at Arkleston and also at the Shield Junction. Annie Wells, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you. Is the Cabinet Secretary confident that the PRT option would be a popular choice with passengers and would solve the problem with congestion on the M8? And will it truly satisfy the appetite for a direct link? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Officer, well, uh, clearly the, uh, the deal partners are working up the business case for a PRT option. Uh, there's a number of airports that have a PRT in place. So, for example, I mentioned Luton uh, don't have a rail link at the present time. They uh, carry some 16 million passengers per year compared to about 10 million that go through uh, Glasgow Airport. They're presently developing a PRT to go from the airport terminal to the rail station in order to provide better connectivity. Uh, because they believe that's the best option uh, to meet that airport's uh, particular needs. There are other airports in the world that have put PRTs in place. There are others that have put direct rail links in place because of the capacity and ability uh, to do so. Uh, what we need to do is to make sure that the business case is brought forward by the city deal partners is one which is robust and is detailed and it delivers the improved surface connectivity to the airport in the way in which the proposal was intended to. And that's what they've set out in doing. And that's why later this month they'll be taking this proposal to the City Deal Cabinet in order to consider the matter further and to commission a full business case on the matter. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Joanne Lambert. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, Labour and Tory MSPs seem utterly oblivious to the detrimental impact their pet train tram proposal will have on commuters to and from Ayrshire and Inverclyde. Can you advise uh, what this white elephant project would actually have, uh, uh, what the impact would be on the economies of Ayrshire and Inverclyde, areas which some of these Tory and Labour MSPs theoretically represent? Cabinet Secretary. So, no, sir, the, the member raises an important issue because the, the Glasgow conurbation, uh, the region as a whole, uh, plays a major part in helping to uh, support and to diversify and to develop the economy within Glasgow itself. Uh, uh, Mr Tompkins raised this particular issue in his uh, own contribution about, about helping to uh, improve the economy of uh, Glasgow. And that's why it's important that connectivity into the city is good and improving it. And that's why we're looking at improving and enhancing services from Shorts, from East Colbride, from Ayrshire, from Inverclyde, from Lanark, uh, in order to make sure that those who need to travel into the city are able to do so. And that is the potential risk uh, with the, and the issue which was raised by the independent uh, outlined, uh, the independent audit of the outlined business case for the tram train link is it would have a detrimental impact on those other areas that are trying to access into the city potentially having a negative impact on its economy, which is why we have to take a whole systems approach to look at how we improve connectivity into the city rather than actually pursuing one option that is then to the detriment of the other parts of the services that come into the city, which would then have a negative impact on the economy in Glasgow and also in the wider Glasgow conurbation. Uh, before I call Joanne Lamb, I have two additional members. I want to call them. I know it's a very hot topic. So please, can we have them crisp? Because we've got to go into the next debate. Joanne Lamont to be followed by Stuart Stevenson, to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Thank you. I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary might reflect on the dangers of seeking to turn one community yeah. against another yeah. when Shameful. all of our communities Shameful. have the right Shameful. to expect a Cabinet Secretary who wants an integrated Shameful. transport system for all. Shameful. Why does he imagine that all those business and communities who are advocates for a rail line are all wrong and Transport Scotland, who only ever sees barriers, is right. And can he identify for me, for me any business, any community organisation in any part of the universe who said to him, what we really need to have integrated transport is a people pod? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I think the member in her uh, initial question ignores the fact that we have to deal with the reality of the situation and the evidence, the evidence that demonstrates very clearly, very clearly the detrimental impact that going forward with the proposed plan at the present time would actually have in the network. And I'm actually surprised, I don't know if it will be Labour's campaign in Ayrshire or in Inverclyde and Lanarkshire, exactly. we want to cut your rail services so we can get a link from the airport 
into the city centre. It sounds as though that will be Mr That's Smith and his colleagues' campaign calling card at the next elections. We're going to cut your services so we can get our rail link. And then, I, uh, I'm sure uh, 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 I, I hope it's a point of order, Mr Gibson. So is it appropriate for people who ask questions to then heckle the answer uh, they to the question they Mr. themselves Gibson. have asked? Sit down, Mr Gibson. Uh, you're no angel yourself, Mr Gibson, can I say. However, sit down, Mr Gibson, sit down. It is for the presiding officer to control the debate. There's a bit of heat on both sides here. We're coming to the end of a very interesting set of questions. I have two more to take, and these must be brief. Stuart Stevenson followed by Graham Day, and they're eating into the next debate. I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Graham Simpson, you've got me all hot and bothered now. Right, Mr Stevenson. Um, I refer to my register of interest. Uh, ten years ago, Glasgow Airport wanted an eight-figure compensation uh, for the proposals to take heavy rail to the airport. Is there any update on Glasgow Airport's current attitude to any of the proposals? Cabinet Secretary, I'm sorry, briefly. Uh, Officer, I can't give him an update on that specific matter. And, uh, Graham, I'm looking at it now, Simpson. Ah, thank you. Um, of course, there is a direct uh, rail link to an airport from Glasgow, and that's to Manchester, um, which, uh, which does seem rather farcical. Um, so, given... Um, I, I, I don't want to argue for reduced rail No, I want your question. It was a question. My question is, um, if, if there has been a flawed business case uh, in this case, will the Transport Secretary look at... Uh, some of the other transport projects in that, ci in that city deal to check if they are also flawed. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, all projects in any city deal are only approved uh, once the uh, outline business case has been fully assessed, as has been the case with this particular project. I wasn't paying attention. Right, that concludes questions on the statement, and we'll have a brief uh, moment before we move on to the next item of business.